This should be needless to say, but all views, opinions, expressions, and curse words represent solely those of the douchebag stating them, and does not represent Mike and Adam's employers, family, churches, congressmen or women, dogs, cats, guinea pigs, wives, or child. None of this should be taken seriously, and if you do, we appreciate your concern, but not really, and really cannot and will not change anything about our process. Sorry, Mom. Welcome to The Skinny with Mike and Adam, two well-informed adolescent men in search of an audience. Here's your hosts, Mike and Adam. All right, guys, can you give me my clothes back? These chains are hurting my wrists. Please, guys, I miss my family. It's been weeks. Are, are you still living off of your island diet? Yeah, and by island diet, I mean you eat like a, something with a little bit of pepper, and then you don't eat for like three months. Excellent. Yeah. And that's how you stay so super skinny. Well, not only that, I also, I, I always take the stairs. And also be bulimic. Oh, okay. Not yeah. anorexic anymore. No. So the pepper's got to come out. Eventually, because you, you don't want the calories from the pepper. Right. There's so many. Messing up my awesome girlish figure. Because what's your goal weight again? Uh, zero. Exactly. I'm 150 <laughs> pounds away from my goal weight. You are way too fat. <laughs> I am a fat ass. <laughs> Hey everybody! <laughs> Welcome to the Fat Ass with Mike and Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, am your man. fat ass Mike. Joining me, as always, is the skinny Adam. How you yes, doing? Yes, even though I've got a couple extra pounds on you. Oh, man, too much pepper. <laughs> and not, en- and not enough bulimia. <laughs> yeah. You need to throw up the pepper. That's. The- I try. I try desperately, but you know. Yeah. I, I can't let other people catch on. They, yeah. They one day. Things. Well, one day I'll, I'm going to reach my goal weight. Well, Eventually. nah. Lucky number 13 episode. We've been we doing the show for 13 weeks. I can't believe that. And we're gaining a fan. A f- wait, who's that? Or maybe maybe 3 quarters of a fan. Well, I week. think our new lo- I think our new uh logo is, you know, isn't it like losing listeners? Like uh, lost losers? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay. We, we can are- stick with that one. That's what I that's what I wrote down. <laughs> the other one was <laughs> losing <laughs> listeners. Like, what was what was the rest of it? Losing listeners like loser liberals. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that alienates our liberal fans. No, it doesn't. We don't have any fans. No. No. Let alone liberal ones. Hey, so we're going to gain some weight this week with the feed. That didn't make any sense. <laughs> All right, so that was a brilliant analogy. <laughs> Gaining so, weight while with being fed yeah, the feed. With being okay. fed the Got feed. It. <laughs> See, if I explain the jokes, they become hilarious. Exactly. Right. That's your tagline. It's like the more you explain a joke, the more funny it is. Exactly. So we got some <laughs> topics in the feed this week. Starting which is a New Jersey band which you may have heard of. It's called My Chemical Romance and they just announced that they're planning to release their scrapped record that they wrote before their most recent album, Danger Days, The True the Lies. The very, very disappointing very Danger Days. Danger Days, The True Lies of the Fabulous Killjoys. The album is called Conventional Weapons, and the band will release the songs two at a time starting in October for the following five months. So really quick, let's get this out of the way. You just mentioned that Danger Days was a very disappointing album for yes, you. Yes, it was definitely the Killjoy of 2011. Exa- 2010. Was it 10? Yeah. Oh, okay. Late well, 2000, it, very late 2010. Okay, yeah, it was not uh, not anywhere on par. Exactly, in they, they seem, my opinion. They seem to. What is your favorite My Chem record? I would probably have to go with. I don't know. I like Three Cheers and Black Parade pretty equally. Okay, and then I like their first album, not as much, but still pretty. pretty their first pretty much. album for me is very amateurish. What's the name of that one? Isn't it um, something crazy? I brought you my bullets. I brought you. You brought me your love. I think. 
Yeah, something weird like that. Very emo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the first album is very amateurish, but it's, you know, it's on the upper upper scales of So like the, the first couple of albums were very violence prone. Yes. Cuz like all the pictures with blood spattered everywhere and I was trying to figure out with the with the cover of Three Cheers just being like the bride and the groom covered in blood. Yeah, like the blood was spatter. was Gerard Way supposed to be shooting himself at those people's wedding? Is that what it was? Um, I don't know, because <laughs> if, if you open up the album art, if you have the actual physical album, you see the story going on, and it's still very vague. You see okay. you see the bride without any blood on, you see the groom with no blood on at all, yes. and then you see like a violent picture, something happens, and then the final one is supposed to be the album cover where they're in caressing each other and about to kiss okay it's very weird I don't covered know. in blood or Co- there, with, the, with the blood splatter, splatter yes. yeah with the blood splatter. So that's what i was thinking like it was gerard way's ex-girlfriend who left <laughs> him for this guy and now he's going emo and it's like you know what i should do go shoot myself in the head at their wedding well the, uh, well, the thing memory. about gerard way he's very much a storyteller and he, he likes to he likes to tell a story through his music and you know it didn't come across very well it's very vague like i said but Whatever. So my speaking of three cheers, I think three cheers would probably be my favorite. Not to sound cliche, but it's like my favorite Mike Kim album. Uh, it, it has just enough it has just enough catchy mainstream tunes as there is, you know, underground stick to their roots, angry rock music that's just very yeah. raw and passionate. A little punkish. Yeah. Little yeah. Every, it, it's got everything that oh, yeah. that one would need. Of course, I didn't listen to them until. 2011 mm-hmm. but so i was several <laughs> years want, yeah. too late <laughs> i was like oh i get it now so speaking of my chemical romance well, for this new album uh or new old album conventional weapons mm-hmm. what are you expecting i really don't know because when we were reading the the press release or whatever from the guitar player yeah frank and, frank Ayero is yeah. the one who wrote is the one who he wrote said, the press release we were so proud of danger days that now we want to go back and to, and and do this other, and and show everybody this other album that we've already forgotten about. And yeah, it's not, or it's not really that important to us. I anymore. listened to it like ten times, and I haven't listened to it since. Yeah, yeah. And he said, he said, I w- I would have this conventional weapons album on my iPod, and I'd listen to it just like it was my own personal. Right. Nobody else in the world has ever heard this kind of thing. And now I think with the struggling sales of Danger Days, <laughs> I'm thinking that's where their mindset is going. But they've turned into a completely different band and well, based much on older the, now than they were yeah most of them have families now yeah, most of them they're are all married. older than me they're yeah. not even gen y anymore <laughs> <laughs> they're clear they gen aged X. out of gen yeah. y <laughs> <laughs> well the it will based on all based on the press release that frank ayero wrote last week and also the story that the story that this this album was no secret. I, I think most My, Chem, Chem, My Chemical Romance fans knew about it because they talked about it mm-hmm. when Danger Days first came out, how they wrote this album, and it's kind of blocked away, and we may or may not show it to our fans later. Yeah. But the, the the whole story behind the album is that the, they talked briefly in 2010, and they elaborate, and, and basically the band admits that they were being burnt out due to you know touring excessively for the Black Parade album. Probably they, putting on makeup every single night. Yeah, that that, 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 that takes a lot. That of takes time. a lot of work. <laughs> so by the time they finished, they did re- everything they used. We're like, we're not doing that. We're not going to dress all in leather yeah. to perform. We're a serious band, guys. Yes. So by the time they actually got to the studio and they recorded conventional albums, uh, which by the way was described as you know more. Weapons, yeah. Yeah, conventional weapons. I'm sorry, which was described by the band as more, you know, a punk rock sounding, more true to form, uh, true to form to their roots album. Uh, they felt like it didn't push the envelope enough, considering being the successor to Black Parade, which they were all huge fans of. And uh, it makes it, ha- you know, one has to wonder, you know, if Danger Days was received with mixed feelings by both fans and critics, is there a chance that Conventional Weapons would be a better album? I sure hope so. Yeah. I hope it's something that I could stand listening to. Yeah. The I other mean, interesting thing I'm interested because they say it's it's a more true to form album and it's more, you know, punk alternative pure rock sounding. Yes. But the fact that they chose to scratch that and proceed with Danger Days has me worried. Exactly. Yeah, like so, Danger Days was so much better than this album. Yeah. And so maybe this one is just a bunch of crappily thrown together pop punk songs Ooh. that could be on the next Blink-182 album. True, yeah. And they just said, let's scrap this. Yeah. 
But, you know, the other interesting thing when he's talking about, like, coming off their Black Parade tour and they were on top of the world, it was the highest they're probably right. ever going to get. He's like, <laughs> there is a certain amount of depression that came along with that. That could Which, be a again, good thing. We, yeah. We've talked about how these stars get so big and then they still feel like life is meaningless. So, yeah. I, I I don't know where I was going with that. Yeah. It just was very, <laughs> yeah, it's very annoying to hear about bands for like, man, we conquered the world, but I'm still so sad all the time. I mean, <laughs> it, it, coming from coming from the perspective of artistry, depression can be a good vehicle to write and create art. So I mean, we'll have to wait and see. But that's and your goal of a band is to like make it to the top like that. Well, the goal of a band should be to create art and have people love you no, for your art. To make it to the top. Oh, money. <laughs> to be more popular than Justin Bieber. <laughs> right. And to have money, yes. <laughs> so speaking of the album conventional But also knowing weapons, that you'll never you'll never reach that same success again. That's true. Yeah. So, Unless so, you're so, Justin Bieber. So speaking of conventional weapons, uh, this is the actual track listing and release date for each song. So uh, Boy Division and Tomorrow's Money comes out on October 30th, 2012. That's a, that's a hit right there. Right there. Boy Division. <laughs> That's the next boy band coming from <laughs> England, I believe. Uh, yep. Ambulance, all in caps. Yes, finally and back to the ambulance discussion. <laughs> we can't have a, a, a My Chem album without hearing about him having to go to the hospital. Right, So, and also Gun, which comes out. Well, there you go. Gotta yeah, there have, you go. There's a lot of gun discussion. Very true to form. Yeah. So that comes out on November 23rd, 2012. Uh, next two songs are The World is Ugly Ooh. and The Light Behind Your Eyes. Aw. That's a total opposite <laughs> end of the spectrum. Very jarring, those two. Yes. And that comes out December 18th, 2012. Ooh. Ringing in the new year, we got Kiss the Ring and Make Room, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, <laughs> exclamation point. <laughs> and that comes out January 8th. And that one will be con- con- competing with uh, Chad Kroger and Avril Lavagna. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't forget about that. And finally, the last releases for this album will be Surrender the Night and Burn Bright. Hey, that rhymed. That comes out night burning bright. <laughs> it's just it's a medley of two songs. Yeah, it's it's just yeah, it's up. just divided. In the, this is divided right in the middle. And that it's comes 15 out minutes long. February fifth, two thousand thirteen. Okay. So you excited about? Are you, are you I'm, cautious? I'm interested. I'm We're cautiously interested. optimistic. Though. Always cautiously right. optimistic, just like with uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers doing the same thing. Right. Which with we have two songs every month. Yeah, which we mentioned on one of our early episodes. We still haven't had a chance to listen to at all. No, I was going to wait until all nine of them or ten of them, however many they're going to. Are be. you going to wait for this, or do you want to listen to them as they come out? I think I'm going to wait for all of them. Okay. But you know, if it, just Why not, it, right? it just depends on when Mike. <laughs> buys when them buys them from, yeah. from iTunes and, and <laughs> Best Buy and uh, buys me a copy. So before I'll I pay get you back, in, I promise. Yeah. So for <laughs> so for before I get into huge uh, trouble, thank you, Adam. <laughs> let's move on to the next story. Uh, in the world of medical science, the world's first mother-to-daughter womb transplant has been successfully pl- performed in Sweden. Now this is an interesting story. It is a team of ten doctors in Sweden, led by Dr. Michael Olsson have successfully performed the world's first mother-to-daughter uterus transplant. Both patients whose names will not be released are in their 30s and have responded well to the transplants. Uh, they were up and walking within hours of the operation and released only after a couple days. Dr. Olalson has stated that the transplant will not yet be considered a complete success until after the women have successfully carried and given birth to children. Ah. This obviously leads us to the fact that the women will hopefully give birth to babies... From the same exact uterus that they were carried in. Fascinating or weird? You, I'm going to go with fascinating because it sounds like there's a, a superhero thing coming from this. <laughs> it's like, I was born in an implanted uterus. <laughs> <laughs> Which my mom also came from. Yes. Yeah. It, it's, it's a weird superhero origin. Thing. Yeah. So, I don't know. As long as... Uh, it means that there can be more uh, healthy uteruses out there. Yeah. Uh, and, one of the women... Because it was, it was actually two daughters and both of them... Received uteri, uteri, I guess, <laughs> uteri. from their from Uteruses their mothers. Sounds yeah. weird. One of them lost their uterus due to uh, cervical cancer, and the other mm. one of the the other patient was not born with a uterus. So, uh, so the transplant was successful. They got them both from their mothers, and uh, it's a wait and see, I guess. I'll Go have the it. I'll have the article uh, listed below if you guys want to check it out. Someday, hopefully, Mike and I can be the recipients of a new uterus. Yes, because I know I really need one. Well, I don't badly. need one in my. Body. I just want to frame it on the wall. <laughs> I do like uteruses. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Who doesn't? 
<laughs> I need mine in my body because I I ironically was born without one as well. Yeah, same here. And it's, I've it's, always wondered, where's my uterus? <laughs> it's a burden. <laughs> We're not true women without our uterus. Someday, someday. <laughs> so if any, any of you women out there want to donate your uterus to Mike and Adam, please email us in the link below. Yes, with, you a, can be... with, a, with a link to your uterus. Yes. And we'll take it. <laughs> please, send us pictures of you, please send us pictures of your vulva and vagine. Yes. Just to make, so you we don't know have to that... show us the uterus, but just show us like the entry going yeah. into the uterus. <laughs> and I think we'll be happy with that. <laughs> we just need to make sure it's a healthy yes. uterus. Yeah. And make sure... You we, don't got... want, we don't want to get sick. You know? <laughs> it's nice and shaved and, <laughs> and in good condition. Yeah, prepped for surgery. <laughs> yes, that's, exactly. what, that's what you're trying to say. <laughs> Man, we just keep getting in more and more trouble. After <laughs> moving <these>. on. <laughs> moving on. So you kids out there, this is the next story. You kids out there, be mindful of how you choose to use the phrase LOL because it could land you some jail time just like it did for Paula Asher from Woodford County, Kentucky. And that's the first mistake right there is being from Kentucky. That's true. We No one, no one needs that horrible state. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but ex- except for Smallville, Kentucky, like we talked about last week. That was Kansas. Kansas. Oh, sorry. sorry. I'm going to edit that out. Sorry, awesome <laughs> dude that commented on us. Yes, Ben Isinger, who was yes. one of the co-founders of the of of the petition to change uh, Hutch- Hutchinson, Kansas, to Smallville, actually right. commented on our YouTube show. So thank you for checking you us out. Very much appreciate it. That was awesome. That was weird. And we'll keep on shouting out. But the, this horrible state in a in a in a Woodford a Woodford County judge warned Paula Asher about her Facebook postings after she drove drunk and ran into the side of another car. Oh. Af- after the crash, Asher posted the following <laughs> sentence on her Facebook page: "My dumb ass." They censored the word "ass" for some reason. Because it's Kentucky. Oh, it's Kentucky. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus gets mad if you say the word "ass." My dumb ass got a DUI and hit a car. LOL. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what you say when you get when you get a DUI, right? That's what I would have said, especially <laughs> if I was drunk, I guess. Uh, the posting disturbed the people in the car she hit and the judge so much that Asher was ordered by the court to shut down her Facebook page. I don't really know the legality. I don't know if that's legal. And also I yeah. wonder how the people she hit were able to find her on Facebook. I think f- I think this is this I think it was brought up in 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 court. Oh. Yeah. I don't know why her so Facebook post. That's really weird. Yeah. yeah. It, it, that's, we a, don't, that's an attorney that had too much time on his hands <laughs> really, in yeah. Kentucky. Like, finally, I got a case. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't, yeah, like, like you said, I don't really know the legality of a judge ordering you to shut down your Facebook page. Mm-hmm. But the Asher ignored the judge's order to shut down her Facebook page. And since she didn't shut down the page, she was sentenced to two days in jail on a contempt charge. Mm-hmm. Asher said, I didn't think LOL would put me in jail. I don't know what's up with Kentucky. It's a horrible state. We it should, really we don't it, need it. It doesn't sound like a very knowledgeable state. True. They don't even know. I've spent lots, or I spent a little bit of time in Kentucky <laughs> <laughs> driving through. You didn't. You didn't put LOL on your Facebook. Though. I, I hope not. Yeah. Made sure not to. But I did <laughs> post that. You know, people from uh, Kentucky thought it was really cool to be from California. Yeah. They, you they eat. Think, you eat. A guacamole there? You have you avocados? Eat avocado? How close are you to Hollywood? <laughs> Only sixty miles. Wow, you must be famous. <laughs> you know, you know Brad and Angelina. I do. We call him Brangelina over here. Right. We, <laughs> <laughs> and that was about the bulk of that conversation. But yeah. That, that that waitress at the Ponderosa Steakhouse in Moorhead, Kentucky, <laughs> just thought me and my wife were, were so cool because we drove from California, well, and she said, "You guys would be back, cool." Please be sure to pick me up. Yeah, <laughs> and take me to California because I can't stand living. Because I need because I'm because I'm a struggling actress who needs to find right. work in Hollywood. Right. And you know that and that and as we all know that story always ends with her ending up in a strip club and or porn. Definitely. So you did Country yourself. Porn. You did the porn industry a disservice by not picking her up and Saying bringing her back over here. More head goes wild. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the best part about all that was her saying, I've been to Montana. That's kind of close to California, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I've pretty much been to California because I've been to Montana. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes, yes, you have. Don't worry, sweetie. You'll never leave this town. <laughs> <laughs> we, we apo- we'll give you that dream. <laughs> we apologize to our fans in Montana for, for that comparison. <laughs> all right. So, next story in the fee. We got a, a disturbing story out of Southern California. A Southern California chef by the name of David Vines has been accused of allegedly slow cooking his dead wife's body and then dumping it out 
as kitchen waste. Mm. Delicious. Yes. This so, ties in with uh, the story about Jesus learning, or we learned that Jesus had a wife this week. Oh, right. So, I don't know. But there he, it's, it's something could have tied in with this. Uh, not really, because if you look at the parchment paper, it was, it was that, that story was written on. It was written 400 years after the Bible has been written. So... And he said, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> my wife. <laughs> He's my wife. So uh, anyway, according to this article. cooking my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so according to this article, a Southern California chef is on trial for allegedly killing his wife because in this country you're innocent of proven guilty, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so allegedly killing his wife, he told, his, he told he police that he slow cooked admitted her. to it. <laughs> he admitted to it, but he's still allegedly. Yeah, I love, I love the legal yeah. system in oh, this country. Man. So uh, he So he allegedly killed his wife. He told police that... He slow cooked her body, then dumped it out as kitchen waste, according to an interview that he played in court on Tuesday. Dawn Vines disappeared in 2009, and, and police identified her husband David, a chef at the former Time Restaurant in Torrance, California, as the prime mm. suspect. In 2011, investigators dug up the Time Cafe, which Dawn co-owned, searching for her body. But in a taped interview played Tuesday for the court, David Vines seemed to tell police that her remains may never be found. "Quote: I took some." Some things like weights that we and I put... He's not very good at grammar. <laughs> that we use and I put them on top of her body and I just slowly cooked it and I ended up cooking her for four days, wow. Vines said on tape. Vines claimed he argued with his wife then bound her arms and feet and duct taped her mouth shut. Yeah, that'll do it. Now, if, you were, if, if one is to slow cook a wife... Yes. Four days is, is generally the right amount of time? Uh, you're overcooking it at that point. The meat's going to get very I mushy. Yeah, and I would think that it would be very tender after that. Uh, it gets tender after that. And every time you open the hours. pot, it would... <laughs> <laughs> it would as, it, as an amateur chef myself, I, I, I think four days is, is w- well exceedingly... Okay. To, if you want to actually eat it, but I, for, <laughs> the whole point was for him to throw it out. So, uh, and every time you open the pot, it says, Close that pot! <laughs> So Vines claimed that he stuffed his wife's 105-pound body in a drum and disposed of the remains as if it were kitchen waste. Quote, I came up with the idea of cleaning the grease, the grease traps and commingling in the, the excess, the excess protein, he said he could be hear, heard saying on the tape. David Vines told police that he recovered Don's skull and jawbone and hid him in his mother's attic <laughs> because that's what you do when you kill your wife. Right. Investigators say they've it's never... she talked too much. Gotta yeah, remember. exactly. So, so. The job. <laughs> <laughs> You're cooking too much food at the restaurant, <laughs> David. You're Invest- not cooking that right. You're <laughs> Inve- not cooking me correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Investigators five days, say four days. they never recovered any body parts. Uh. So... Awesome, awesome story coming out of Cal- Southern California. It's so sad. Torrance seems like such a nice, mild-mannered community. And imagine if uh, imagine nobody, for people who have eaten at the Time Restaurant. Nobody I t- know crazy ever lived in Torrance. Uh oh. Do you know t- crazy people? in I Torrance may have Stone? known someone. <gasps> oh boy. At some point, but I, I probably shouldn't go into that. All right. All right. <laughs> so every story we're ending that like one of us are getting in trouble. So maybe maybe this maybe this final story in the feed will. Shed some light on some stuff. So in El Monte, California, residents have gathered support for a group of lifeguards who have recently lost their jobs, seemingly for posing, posting a video on YouTube of them performing a parody of the greatest song ever written, Gundam Style. Now, did you, did you see this video before I informed you of it this week? I did not. I have not seen it yet. Okay, because it was all over the news. This yeah. is like gaining... A super duper amount of following, oh, 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 and all, oh. the, and it's you know, it's these these punk ass lifeguards wearing their their city appointed swimwear, assholes, and, assholes, and, and dancing to this this dude's song, trying to promote a On city service, city property. So by I the way, wrote a statement. Please share with us in Adam. defense of the poor city. <laughs> it depends. Okay, I didn't know you were going that way. <laughs> so I for please one, provide your argument. Please. I for one am proud to see the El Monte <laughs> City Council finally taking a stand against its band of hooligan lifeguards. Nowhere in their employee handbook did it authorize them to publicize a city-owned pool on YouTube parodying a pop culture reference that will disappear after three months. Hey, hey, hey! We eh? don't know that. Eh? <laughs> in Opa, an effort to style. what? In an effort to what? Increase business? This is just another example of the liberal elite <laughs> taking advantage of city resources for their own personal gain. It is. It's very true. The lifeguards interviewed in the article, what were their, prof- their other professions? Students. <gasps> 
They don't know That's any right. At both the University of Laverne <laughs> and Cal Poly Pomona. <laughs> Two of the most liberal universities in Laverne and Pomona. <laughs> the liberal media, man. Brainwashing our students. And look at how much money they were making on average. Somewhere between $9.54 an hour up to $14.20 an hour. They are the 1%. Thinking they can bully around the city officials like <laughs> exactly. that? Come on. That is so much money. <laughs> they will soon be able to afford non-Walgreens brand sunscreen <laughs> and, the co- <laughs> and the cost of the bus ride to the pool every day. <laughs> and what is this about filming not only the pool facility, but also city-owned lifeguard swimwear? I am just appalled. <laughs> now inner city kids will just be able to see what a pool looks like on their computer rather than pay Whoa. two bucks to go down to the pool and remember that they don't know how to swim anyway. Exactly. So if they see this video on YouTube and see what the pool looks like, they won't pull money into city resources to start to stimulate the economy. Exactly. Fucking students, man. I, got, I know. Fuck. And these are lifeguards that grew up using this pool and say they were, quote, only trying to help generate an interest. (laughs) It's just a reminder that city resources are never being wasted in this great state of ours. No. (laughs) Because if you don't fire the people trying to make your city better by both posting on the Internet as a way of advertising and parodying a pop culture reference, then the terrorists win. They do. Uh, you should be a lawyer. I needed to just make my sentiments known. You should be a lawyer. I think so. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> but it's just, it's, it's mind boggling that city resources should be going to fight these people making somewhere between 9 and $14 an hour. Yeah, really. They are, they are the ones tearing this country down. They're the 47%. They're that the Ronnie reason why about. a majority of cities in Southern California are going bankrupt. I think so. Yeah. They're part of the 47%. Are, are, we, are we still being ironic here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, check out the story uh, underneath. So uh, the the town, uh, you know, there's people from people from the town. They're rallying together to you know support the the life courts. In a, in all seriousness, they didn't do yeah. anything wrong. They <laughs> did not do anything wrong. It was actually a very well made video. Uh, yeah. It was, I thought. I was like, yeah. wow, look at these guys are like they know what they're doing. I know. That's the crazy thing. And, and uh, did they do it on the job though? I mean, no, they could they did get it off hours they did it while the pool was closed okay then there's then what's the problem here i know it's just the city getting its panties in a twist no because cities are retarded sometimes they are so, they got nothing better to do so i guess we're just yeah, gonna pick on some kids who are making a video yeah uh, and the fun part is 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 knowing that like these kids grew up going to this pool and now they're like all in their 20s right and they're just like trying to make it more friendly yeah, I mean, they're just, they're just sharing their childhood with a fun song. But I'm telling and you, Gangnam Style, it's going to be gone. Yeah, well, they said that about Three the Macarena. They said that about the Macarena. They said that about 98 <laughs> Degrees reuniting. Where's 98 <laughs> Degrees now, Mike? Where's I, 98 Degrees now? <laughs> doing shows on the Today Show? <laughs> that was way back in August. <laughs> We're in September, goddammit. I know, that was, that was, that was, that was years ago, Street motherfucker. Boys reuniting? Is that everywhere now? Uh, well, we haven't no. followed up on that story, but has we it should... been parodied on SNL yet? <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know you made it. I think so. So, for, so closing out the the feed here. So, if so, for the city, the the I think the more uh, I, I think I think the more the story becomes gets gets out there, the more it's just going to push back on the city just to let it go. So, yeah. they, they need to, but they could always flex their muscles and say, like, fuck you, we don't like you. Now we can bring in a whole bunch of people and pay them $8.26 yeah, an spend hour. spend taxpayer money to fight right. this stupid case. Exactly. Which they started in the first place. And they're just like, this is a matter of policy, <laughs> and um, we have to look at all the details first. So it's going to take a couple of weeks. We're in an election year right now, <laughs> and uh, we need to make sure that we stop hooligans like this so I can be, I, I, I can, you know, come back as governor and protect the people Governor of Torrance. McCullough. Yeah. I like it. This is El Monte. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Torrance well, El Monte, is, sorry. And in Torrance, you get cooked <laughs> by your husband. <laughs> so don't reelect, yeah, don't reelect the, the governor of Torrance because he's going to. I thought Kentucky was bad. Look at what, what we're doing here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. So that was the feed for this week. Thank you guys for sticking through. If you have any comments, questions below, please feel free to comment below. Yeah. 
and even dislike us on, on YouTube if you want to. <laughs> I know. We came across <laughs> one of our videos and somebody disliked us. Yay. And if that was you, please tell us why. It was somewhere around episode seven, I think. I think, though. It was one like, and that was me. I hit yeah. like on that one. <laughs> and somebody else hit dislike. I try my best to like every single episode because that gives a 100% li- you know, like status. I, I 100%. Back to son. 99%, I guess. <laughs> Can't please everybody all the time. Yeah. Well, at least they could tell us why. It would have been nice. Well, like so, you guys suck or something. Yeah, that would help. Oh well. But maybe we then we can work to you know sucking less. Over time. Over time. <laughs> It'll never happen. We gotta have listeners to you know actually <laughs> get the. Oh, I'm rambling again. Let's go on the play. <laughs> Right on the plate this week, Adam. Did I tell you that uh, I saw a great movie this over the week? You did, and you said it was called Finding Nemo. Yes. Well, Finding that was Nemo on the plate two? this week. <laughs> <laughs> that was our on the plate this week. No, I, I saw um, uh, Trouble uh, with the Curve. Yes, I saw that also. <laughs> I saw Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. And that was a movie that came and went pretty quickly. I know it didn't it, do very well in the box office. It, yeah. it didn't. Do very well with critics. It's about it's it a split a, movie. It's, it's about another 50-ish. Steve Carell kind yeah. of like not so good. It's Steve Carell kind of kind of flexing his acting acting chops, showing that he is. St- I think he does have a lot of range. You know, he does, he doesn't just do uh, comedic Some, roles. He's, someday he'll realize that he needs to stop. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was very. I thought he did very well in this movie. It's okay. it, it's kind of a half comedy, half drama. And if you don't know, uh, seeking the friend for the end of the world, the premise of that movie is a. Uh, the world is ending. Uh, there's an asteroid coming, and it's gonna destroy the world. And there's no getting there's no getting around it. So, it, we follow Steve Carell's character uh, at the beginning of the movie. We f- we see him and his wife in the car, and they're listening to the news report over the car radio. Uh, they pretty much say that the mission to get the asteroid, you know, to not hit us, that mission failed. Uh, Steve Carell's wife is distraught, and she just takes off for no reason, without saying a word. Mm. We never see her, and that was Rachel Paris, I think. We never see her again. Oh, I like her. I know, I do too. <laughs> so, um, what I wanted to talk about with she Adam saved that movie, maybe. I know, yeah. So, <laughs> what I wanted to talk about with Adam is uh, basically what would we do if we had 21 days to live, <clears throat> and we're going to set some ground rules that are based on the movie itself. So. Number one, all airline travel has been suspended. Mm-hmm. And uh, number two, all cell phone and landline telephone towers are down. Don't ask me why. That's just the way the movie did it. But Is it there just, any internet access still? If there's no phone lines, then there's going to be no internet. Oh, yeah. So Duh. No, no, <laughs> so uh, I can't email you on Facebook. Right. Is what you're telling me. We live close enough together where I can come to your house and be like, oh, shit, did you hear that the end of the world's coming? And yeah, but I might not be home because I'll be out, you know. Stocking up, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so, so, Adam, why don't we start with you? We haven't heard much from you this this episode, actually. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I struggle with this one because, like, I, I try to think of s- uh, funny stuff at first, right? And then my wife reminded me how like horribly depressing it would be. And well, walk would, us walk us through the process that you were going through. Well, I was gonna just say like I would I would you know jump out of an airplane and. Climb Mount Everest or something like that. Oh, you like get that. you get over your fear of heights <laughs> thing. Right? I would definitely go and want to to parachute. Yeah, you know, but, but uh, I don't know if there'd be anybody who would like fly the plane <laughs> up there for me to do that. Well, the interesting thing I saw in the movie was uh, though the different ways people used to cope with such a tragedy. I mean, the world is ending in literally three weeks. Yes, and you would think, that, oh, everyone just go, don't go to work. Everyone just, you know, be with your family, be with your loved ones. But some people don't have that luxury. So the only way they can cope is just by going about their normal routine. And they would still drive to work. They would still go to the grocery store. They would still, you know, deal with Until the everyday grocery store life. ran out of everything. Exactly, yeah. Yes. I and don't... I would probably go to work for the first few days. Right. Just to see what was going on. Yeah. And, and then further assess if I really needed to keep going, which I yeah. probably would stop after a couple of days. You are a public servant, <laughs> and you do help people through traumatic times. Do you feel... But I would just tell all of them, like, what's the big deal? The world's going to end. Just go go do something fun. Do you feel any obligation to help anybody who needs, you know, minor therapy or anything? 
sure. But, ex- but that's refuse. exactly what I would be saying is like, just go do something fun. <laughs> Don't waste your time with me. Yeah. I'm not that important to hang out with. <laughs> why am I here? <laughs> why did you, yeah, why did you keep your appointment? You've got, well, not everyone has. Now, one thing I would insist upon is the six way orgy. Okay. Yeah. Now that's something we would have to do. I mean, you just you have to do it. You have to do it. And, yeah. And clothing is not. Clothing we, is. We don't need to worry about clothing anymore. Yeah, uh, nudity is mandatory. Yes, mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> so I would. I would. And, uh, and uh, another thing that the 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 movie uh, touched upon was people just expressing themselves sexually, verbi- verbally, and there's a lot of people just wanting to. You know, just have all this crazy sex that they never did, could never do before. I was telling my wife, like, you know, I would tell everybody to go bang whoever they wanted. But then I said, wait, I would make sure that the other person wanted to be banged yeah. first. Yeah, consensual <laughs> sex. Yes. Consensual sex is good. <laughs> Even just because the world's ending doesn't mean you need to start raping people. <laughs> yeah, in, in the face of Armageddon, let's, let's still be civilized and not murder and rape and steal. But, yeah. <laughs> if we but, can, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there, there, is, there was rioting in the movie. There were still yeah. people wanting to be dicks and hurt each other. But, of course. Yeah, so it's, it's a very... I, I, what I read on Rotten Tomatoes after I watched it, because I loved it personally, what I saw, the people who didn't care for the movie much was because the tone of the movie was it w- was very jarring, and it kept it kept switching between a comedy, it kept switching between a tragedy, then it was a drama, then it was very philosophical, mm. and, 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 and back to a comedy again, and it kept making those jumps, and... I, I did notice it myself, but it much was, like our podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Much like this segment of the show. It's right a now. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. But so, but, it, but then uh, the more I thought about it, th- that is the human condition. We do bounce back and forth between emotions, especially in times of tragedy. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree. Yeah. So we've got we've got people that use humor to cope. We've got people who go about their day. We've, we've got we've got people that just express themselves as best they could, sexually, verbally. It doesn't really matter, and you know. It, it, so, it, I, I appreciated the movie for doing that, and I guess not everybody agreed with that. But Adam hasn't seen the movie himself, but no, he, he'll I probably see it soon. won't. Really? Yeah, you weren't interested at I'm all. I'm kind of sick of of seeing movies that are saying like, "Oh, look at us, we're funny," and then you watch it, and it's not funny. Like at all. funny people. <laughs> um, that one I was okay with, but there's a handful of other ones that. Just are not. Funny. Yeah, it, it wasn't advertised very well. It was yeah. advertised as I think all the jokes were in the trailer. I think so. When you think of like Steve Carell and T.J. Miller being yeah. in it, and they kept on showing the T.J. Miller clip, which was hilarious because it's like he was only in the movie for like ten yeah, minutes. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure. And you're like, oh, this is going to be awesome, and then it disappeared quickly. So I don't know what what I would do. I would probably just hang out in my house all day and for 21 re- days re- read all seven Harry Potter books <laughs> and then all seven Chronicles of Narnia books. Yeah. And say to myself, why didn't they have enough time to make all of the Chronicles of Narnia movies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they couldn't do like every two years like like Harry Potter, I guess. So uh, so you just kind of live out your days in peace? I think so. Yeah. After we had the orgy, I'd be okay with that. And yeah. Then i just kind of sit in my backyard and watch my grass grow. Yeah. <laughs> You, you'd you be okay with, with, with living through it to the very end? Because some I people would... I would kill myself before the meteor hit. Right, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I would do that because I don't think Suicide I by it, going. Well, I just, yeah, I don't think I would do that. Unless yeah. I just wanted to go jump off the Grand Canyon or something. <laughs> Which you could drive to. I, yeah, and it's really easy to jump off of it because, <laughs> you know, there's like... There's there's the walking part. There's and, a waist and then high there's fence. a hole. Yeah. No, there's no fence. Oh, there's no fence. No, nice. you just walk up right to the edge, and you're like, oh, <laughs> hi, a hole in the ground out of nowhere. <laughs> so I'm gonna make sure I stand back because there's nothing to keep you from falling in. Right. But if you want to jump in to die, that's a long roll down. <laughs> that's a very painful way to die. It I is. I wouldn't want to die that way. I don't think so either. That's well, and killing yourself would be right. You know, painful. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Unless you want to do. Well, there's methods, there's there's no, long okay. there, you can like OD on like sleeping pills and yeah, that doesn't like that. sound very cool either. Well, I, well, some people do it. Some people don't do it. I have a small stomach. It's yeah. full easily. Wouldn't be able to take <laughs> enough. Sitting yeah, <laughs> take like three pills. You're out for like, like yeah. oh, I'm so stuffed. Yeah. So, uh, myself, uh, th- I've been thinking about it since the movie really did make me think about you know what what, what, oh, what I d- would do is buy a carton of cigarettes. Ah, oh, there we of go. Cigarette, or okay, two cartons of cigarettes. Yeah, I'd steal them, obviously. 
<laughs> hopefully by gunpoint. <laughs> yeah. And that way I'd have a full pack of cigarettes for every single day left. Okay. And that and I'd sit in my backyard and smoke. Okay. All day long. <laughs> All right. Well, nobody would want you with the orgy because you smell like cigarettes. Fuck you guys. You're going to get you my have... tobacco stinking <laughs> orgy. You, you're you going to have your own orgy then. You're just going to be out in the corner by yourself while the Fine. rest of us have fun. We have the fun. orgy and then I'll smoke. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, uh, uh, be, interestingly, bastard about it. interestingly enough, Steve Carell insisted on paying for everything that he got in the movie. Interesting. Yeah. That was, he was, he was, he, I always got the impression that he was just a very kind man, and even in the face of apocalypse, he could not do anything remotely bad. And yeah. he's a very endearing character, and I like that. So, me myself, it's, it's something that I've been thinking about since I saw the movie, and I'm in a different in my life. I'm in a different uh, place than Adam because I do have uh, a child, a young child mm. too, and so I don't know how I would cope with that we didn't How do really you explain to a four-year-old that yeah. the world is going to come to an in end in three freaking weeks yeah yeah so i i think i would spend the first part of the first part of the end of my days probably talking it over with my family and dealing with it through that and then for and your then, own benefit or for well i don't want to I, I i'd feel horrible if like the asteroid came and then and then my daughter's like oblivious to what's going on and she's there <laughs> freaking the fuck out. <gasps> Holy shit! Daddy, why didn't you tell me this was going to happen? <laughs> yeah, so you I had mean like, 3 weeks to warn me. So uh, I would talk it over with my wife first, uh, you know, we be with each other and, you know, express our, you know, love for each other and you know, that that gay shit. <laughs> <laughs> and your love for everybody else that you love. Exactly. Yeah. So uh <laughs> sexually, I mean. Yeah. yeah. I, I do and you guys I, are both cool. I am sexually attracted to a lot of people, but yes. so uh <laughs> <laughs> So I, w- I would try to, you know, work it, work out the coping process with my family first, especially my daughter, and that would be a very hard thing to do. It wouldn't take like a day. It wouldn't be like, Hey daughter, war's gonna end, so deal with it. Mm-hmm. And she'd be like, Daddy, will you play Barbies with me, please? Sure, why not? Like, why not? The world's going to end. Whatever. I don't care. With it. Well, I play Barbies with my daughter, and the world's not going to end anyway. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> would you avoid work? I think there would be no reason for me to go to work. Yeah. So I mean, you, you're, you're, you and your job do yeah. not have much of a relationship. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I'm not, I don't feel obligated to my job. I, I mean, I, I, I appreciate my job, and I appreciate that it takes care of me and my family. But you know, I, I, my my job's not important enough where I I feel like I should go anymore. Okay. So, th- so I would have all that free time. So I would spend the last of my days first with my family. Then I would then I would spend it with other people I love. I would come over with Adam and Don. Maybe you know, I- assuming Wouldn't assuming we're all free, I think I'd we'd have like one last dinner party and an orgy. An orgy. We would eventual. make sure Zoe was somewhere else. I yeah, guess. we could we could have her babysitter. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Even with three weeks left, we don't need her to see that. It's a couple hours. It's not yeah. child neglect. Yeah, exactly. Or we can just you know put her in the other room. I don't know. No, it's gonna get loud in here, dude. <laughs> That's true. It's gonna get really it's loud. Go, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> mostly be screaming because my asshole will be hurting. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mike, don't do that. <laughs> no, you know you want it, Adam. You know you want it. <laughs> I see the look in your eye. <laughs> oh wait, well, consensual. I'm sorry. Consensual, of course. <laughs> of course. So, uh, what about uh, with, with with your family or anything? I mean, uh, the phone lines are dead. We can't just call yeah. them up. And so, my family is most of them are not in this state. You have the luxury of I having have a your, wife, and I your, have a mom. Yeah, you have your mother and your stepmother here, and so and they're and they're pretty close. They're pretty close. Yeah. I guess I'd have to take a break from the orgy to spend some time with them <laughs> if, if I have to. <laughs> right. No, I, 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 yeah, just spend time. I don't know what what do you do when you spend time. Say your goodbyes and yeah. you know, express your love for someone. I guess you know. Like thank you for all of the support you gave me, which right. obviously doesn't mean much now. But you loved me <laughs> and you made me a good person. Yeah, and I think that's and I appreciate that's important. That a lot. I, th- I think I, th- I think Adam and I are in a good place where we're confident enough to say that we lived. We we live respectable lives, and we, li- we we're both good people. We're good people to strangers. We're good people to our friends. On the surface, <laughs> on the surface, <laughs> I guess. 
There's a, yeah, there's a lot. There's, there's a lot of sexual deviancy going on in my mind, especially. You guys don't want to know what goes on in there. Exactly. I'm, I'm looking at Adam with lustful eyes right now. <laughs> Even Adam's the one to know what's going on. But mm, but but, can't wait. but like I said, we lived. We're we're good people. We you know we never hurt anybody. We never, you know, wished ill will to other people. So I think we. True. We I think we can live the last the remaining days of our lives in peace. I think. Would we yeah. need to fight off like the zombie hordes that will be coming to steal our food supply or something like that? Because you know, yeah, that is an issue. So I mean, I'll I mean that's why people buy guns so that when they get true. attacked, you know, because you don't have a gun, do you? I don't own a gun. I don't own a gun either. So because I'm not in fear of being attacked, right? Me neither. Seven, <laughs> like some people in this country. Yeah, <laughs> some people, some people live in areas where they should fear that, but yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, luckily, I haven't had to deal with that. Yeah, me neither. I've been the victim of crime a few times. Right, but I never thought like you know what would help me to not be a victim of crime? Shooting Owning this motherfucker in the face. <laughs> yeah, so there is that we have to deal with that. So I, I guess board up our windows and doors, maybe block out the sunlight. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, and I mean because the last can... thing we need in the last day, in in our our remaining days is you know vitamin d in our skin exactly yeah. <laughs> but i'll be sitting in my backyard and i guess i'll just hold my rifle while i'm smoking and i'll shoot anybody that comes on my property for me though th- there's also the ethical question of how do i do i choose to end my life or do i choose to ride it out and potentially suffer a painful death at the hands of this asteroid coming to kill us I would, I would, I would want to see the asteroid. Yeah, just so that I can prove that it actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than so you chicken can... shit my way out of it by you know choking to death in my garage. I think there's something monoxide. humbling. <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it's not natural for humans to know when exactly they're going to die, but uh, there is something humbling in choosing how you how you end your life because nobody owns my life but me, and I think. There's something I'm, I'm renting to own mine. True, yes. that's true. I, I do. I do rent my body. <laughs> I sell my body to other people. But uh, oh, that was my other job, by the way. Yes, yes. <laughs> I hopefully don't have to. You'll, show, hopefully, you'll own it. I don't have to not. show up to that job when <laughs> the world. Ending. Mike pays me sixty dollars a month <laughs> to rent his body. <laughs> exactly, and I appreciate that. Uh, okay. You give me free reign, and it's very cool. So, but like I said, there's something humbling in the fact that you get to own your body, and and you get to. You, you get you get to choose how you end your life and there there is without going into too much detail there is a lot of medication in my house <laughs> and it would be very easy for me to <laughs> to overdose to on pills. OD on some sleeping pills i'm just saying uh, yeah okay be sure uh well i won't leave a mess i i'm all for the the visual explosion of the world yeah you're can, gonna you're gonna risk a painful death just to say I'm that I'm gonna take a picture, post it on <laughs> Facebook, and then die. <laughs> Remember, there's no internet because there's no phone line. So well, I'm still gonna post it on Facebook. You yeah, post me. it on your phone. Yeah. Text it there. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. All, Put LOL all, at the end. It's all sending message, sending message, sending message, and ah fuck. And then my body just melts away like a Terminator yeah. two. And <laughs> thumbs up. Yeah. Into the lava. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think it would be a visually stunning way to go, yeah. Rather than just falling asleep, because that that's that's just too peaceful. Yeah. In the movie, uh, Steve Carell had some unfinished business with his father, who who left at a very young age, and so he felt like he never reconnected with it or had a really a, a true relationship. So they kind of drove cross country. They had to siphon gas from abandoned cars and uh. abandoned uh, gas stations and everything. But the uh, you don't have in, you don't you don't think you'd travel anywhere like after well, you're done saying goodbye to your local friends and family? Well, I already saw them all during my past vacation. Okay, so I, I think I, that I I'd be sad if it was now, okay. but if it was like ten years in the future, I might change my mind and be like, eh, let's go drive. But then I would be fearful yes. of like. So for the sake of this conversation, let's say we just heard on the radio right now, twenty one days from now, the world's gonna end. So, so you're saying I'm you're, in a good you're, place you're good. with all my family right now around the country okay. as best as I can be. Okay. Cause there's no way that I would get in my car and drive. Cause I would again be fearful of the mobs of people who are trying to right. siphon my gas. Exactly. Yeah. You know, on the 10 and the 40 and you know, all those, <laughs> especially the 10, you don't want to, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to get on the 10 freeway. So, um, I, I would just, I would make my peace, I guess, with my family in yeah. other States, including my dad who, right. Just well, you like, can't well, call, you can't call by the right. way. Yeah. And I, I, talked to him a few weeks ago on yeah. the phone so That's i guess cool. i just 
have to let that go. See, I haven't had a real conversation with my father, who didn't leave, who's <laughs> he's still with my birth mother. So they, they're Michael's very much not married. abandoned and still yeah. has daddy issues. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, there's lots of different reasons for that. But uh, and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, working on his daddy <laughs> issues, Mike. Meku! <laughs> Michael Jackson McCullough. <laughs> <laughs> and there, there was another thing that I thought about, too, because Steve Carell made peace with his father. Do I do that as well? Because we have very... We don't... I don't... We don't like... My, my family, they're very passive about it, but they're kind of clear that they don't really like having me around. Now it's turning into a therapy session. It I is a therapy session. Go there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I, I I I love my mother very much, and I, I and I love my sister as well, and I love my niece and a couple of my cousins. I would I would I would I would you know say so hi it, to. So if yes, if you were coming in to talk to me and you were telling and you were telling me all this, right? I probably would say enjoy the orgy. Your mom knows you that's love gra- her. That's granted. Yeah. Fuck your dad. <laughs> <laughs> fuck my dad. <laughs> okay, not fuck your dad, but don't worry about your dad. Okay. Because we're all going to be dead in three weeks. What does it sure. matter? Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. If you don't want to make your last three weeks uncomfortable, yeah, that, that, that's true. It. Yeah, I, I, I would make want it as happy as possible. I would want my last twenty-one days to be as happy, especially that I have a wife and daughter to to to, to worry about, and I want to make sure that they're comfortable as well. Exactly. No, that's a, that's a good point. Well, I would I would definitely hug my mom and give her a big kiss and. Hug my sister and hug and my as you're brother. You're driving away from the house, and your dad comes running out. Hey, saying, what about Son, me? But I still love you. Mike extends one middle finger out <laughs> the window to just say, "This is what you get for being Republican, Dad." <laughs> <laughs> Vote Gary Johnson 2012, Dad. <laughs> and he said, "I will, son. I will." And then I stop the car, <laughs> and then and then he and then he runs to the middle of the road, and then I see him in my rearview mirror. And then I continue driving. And then an angry no happy mob ending for Mike. runs up, beats him <laughs> senselessly, <laughs> siphons gasoline from his. I shouldn't have stopped. Still warm body. I shouldn't have stopped. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> and Mike has that guilt with him the rest yeah. of his life, I guess. So there's, there's another thing. I don't know what my wife would want to do with her family. So we'll we'd have to deal with that. But I would. She's yeah. got a big family too. She does. She can't. There's well, probably can't. a lot of you know quinceaneras going on during those three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we. I don't think. I, I don't know. I'm not. I, I don't. I, I. 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 I can't pretend to, you know, be in her mind. So I can't say for sure that whether she want to make peace with the family members that she's not exactly close with so that, i guess that's, that would and be on if you want to invite any of her family members to the orgy i'm okay with that that would be uh, there's okay a couple of that. them yeah there's the, the one you walked with on i'm uh, just saying yeah the one you walked with at, at our at my wedding I, I, and I'm, her sister as well i'm having oh, a hard God. time finding like mexican girls in their 20s <laughs> that i don't find attractive these days it so. is it is almost <laughs> impossible i know almost impossible i don't know what the hell is going on with me <laughs> but it's just it's it's driving me nuts all <laughs> right well i mean that kind of uh finishes it up there so we'll, we'd live the rest of our lives in peace and happiness and try to be as happy as possible try to be as happy as possible yeah there's no reason to live out the rest of your life uncomfortable and you know risk unhappiness with people that you don't get along with is that fair to say i think so okay i would throw all my fiber cereal out the window <laughs> and eat nothing but fruit loops Fuck for it. three days reese's three weeks. puff cereal bitch <laughs> fruit loops for life fruit loops <laughs> yeah, have, you, have you ever tried uh, reese's puff cereal mm, I don't. fucking incredible okay I'll, I'll, I'll switch to that one <laughs> and i'll eat nothing but hamburgers and pizza for three weeks See, and... that's another thing i throw do i continue to eat eat as healthy as i I definitely wouldn't (laughs) really (laughs) because we got that orgy coming i don't think people would appreciate it i need my energy okay so you need to eat a lot of pasta (laughs) okay pasta (laughs) pasta it is okay yes i would still exercise i think in the movie people still went to the gym walks i would probably take some walks but other than that nah safe walks you don't want to be with you You don't want to take your guns with you i guess (laughs) (laughs) and i would just be smoking during the walk yeah continuously that's very counterintuitive i think think so but i gotta remember (laughs) three weeks true what does it matter yeah i probably wouldn't bathe either except before the orgy so (laughs) our listeners out there if if you found this uh if 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 you found this discussion fascinating and if you (laughs) if you found if you happen to watch the movie and you liked it as well why don't you please comment below and let us know how you how exactly would you live out the last 21 days of your life and you know you don't have to go into too much detail 
And if you found it fascinating, I would really, really be concerned about who you are as a person. I think it is fascinating <laughs> to talk about because because it, it kind of brings out your true self to talk about how you would live the end of your life, Adam. I mean, I, I think our true nature so right comes now. Out. I, I view the end of my life as like sitting in a retirement home again, smoking continuously, doing the podcast with me, hopefully doing the podcast, well, still. the hologram cast by then. Yes. I think. <laughs> yes. We won't even have to be in the same like retirement home. Technically we don't now though, if we knew how to do Skype. So I see that sort of like peaceful death floating away in a hospital bed. Yeah. Like that's the way I view it now. Yeah. But to watch like the world explode on itself sounds a little bit more exciting. That, that you at least you have a story to tell the last couple seconds like maybe I'll that jump, was no, awesome or I'll jump off the Grand Canyon as the asteroid is hitting that way before I even hit the ground ah, like the yeah. you gotta time that perfectly though. that would be interesting see you have two birds and one stone you you get to technically kill yourself yeah and you get to get over your fear of heights yay <laughs> 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 and then I'll blog about it later there we go yeah <laughs> blog about it with our corpses exactly we'll, <laughs> i don't know what will happen after that i guess yeah we'll so audience members please space. comment below let us know how you would live out the end of your days yeah well, we want to hear your 9-11 stories yeah which still. is a week too late but thank you anyway for everyone who listened because we got quite a lot of we had a, we had a lot of views last a few week. extra views i was yeah. very impressed i liked it so hopefully we this love will, you guys this will garnish gar- garnish them I mean, we had some a lot of downloads so I, ne- I didn't get any feedback, but uh, assuming that we had more downloads last week than we did the the week prior, I'm assuming that the new Blogspot page is working out for you guys. Did it work out for you, Adam? It did. Awesome. It only took me two minutes to download the thing into iTunes. Good. And I didn't put it on my iPod, but I listened to it on iTunes. All right, good. <laughs> so I was set. <laughs> All right, so I, I'm happy that it, it's working out. But please give us some feedback because there's nothing greater than feeding our egos. And we want to feed your ego by answering your question. Yeah, and if you have any questions, just saying or this is this is yeah, it's cyclical. Yeah, we want it. We want to turn the on the plate segment into you know topical discussions like this. Where we just talk back and forth, our hypothetical questions. So if you guys have a topic for us, which has happened before, and we can only nine, talk about so many wives being cooked in pots. Yeah, for so long. Imagine <laughs> if that was our on the plate, Adam. How would you <laughs> cook your wife? <laughs> <laughs> mm, I would make it to a nice ragu. I'm saying the, the four days that'd be pretty good. The meat would just be falling off the bone. Yeah, a little bit of barbecue be, sauce. Dude, it would be it would be totally overcooked and it would be really spongy and it wouldn't be appealing be a, at all. A lot of red hair mixed in with my. Well, meat. the reason why he cooked it for <laughs> four days is because he needed to tenderize and really break down so he can just throw it out and without he was gonna any take, suspicion. Do that much work? Why would he bother to tell police about it later? Because he's a fucking moron? I know. That's yeah. Torrance for you, though. Yeah, it is Torrance. <laughs> there we go. It, oh, apo- apologies to anyone in Torrance. <laughs> <laughs> so Except we're going to go... a couple of those people, and you know who you are. <laughs> okay, maybe just one. So we're going to close out the end of this, ep- this week's episode. We're going to go into our sound off. All right, so... The end of this week's episode is also the end of a saga, and Adam totally called it. Adam, can you walk us through our sound off? Reunited and it feels so good. Who sings that song? Reunited and I don't know who. Okay. Uh, Because I was going to make a joke. Peaches and herb. I (laughs) I was going to make a joke that you were going to say the... I was going to say, hey, Adam, who sings that song? Oh, so-and-so. Let's keep it that way. Let's keep it that way. I knew it was coming. That's why I wanted to fuck you up. Ah. (laughs) But anyway, you know who's going to be singing that song now? Is our dear friends, friends of the podcast, Robert friends, Pearson, <laughs> friends of the devil, and friends <laughs> of vampire lovers everywhere, K Stu, our pets, yay, and themselves back together. What? Who called this, Mike? Who was it? There was somebody a part of this podcast who said that this was going to happen. Frank Lemus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just surprised it happened this soon. Oh uh, yeah, I was going. Yeah, for you were you were going for the part, part four point two. two comes out at yeah. sometime in November. I was thinking maybe end of October, but they waited until the middle ish of September. So Stewart and Robert Panson putting their problems behind them. 
Question mark. Ooh. According to multiple reports, the Twilight Saga stars have reunited following Kristen's cheating scandal with her Snow White and the Huntsman director, Rupert Sanders. According to people, Kristen, 22, and Robert, 26, met up in Los Angeles over the weekend. A friend close to Robert told the mag, I think they'll be a couple again. <gasps> Quote, end quote. Aww. E! Online, and we always trust them, yeah. also reported Incredible that the forces. co-stars have been spending time together in a secret location in L.A. By you mean LA, their home? Do they mean Louisiana? <laughs> do they mean Los Angeles? <laughs> do they mean Lake Arrowhead, California? We'll never know. <laughs> People in Lake Arrowhead, please comment below <laughs> if you've seen our pats in case do holding hands and canoodling in public. <laughs> Um, Rob and Kristen might be having some FaceTime, but they may not mean that everything is in their relationship is completely worked out. That was a poor use of grammar. Another people source said, moving on is easier said than done and clearly harder than expected. Oh, <laughs> well said people magazine source. To be um, fair, it's really hard to tell if case Stu is happy about coming back, getting back together with our pats because she has, has no emotion. The same facial expression. And this picture she has brown eyes. Yes. Like she does in Twilight. Right. But in real life, we all know she has blue eyes. <gasps> so I don't know what's going on in this picture. She's a big, fat, <laughs> phony. And, you know, Robert Pattinson, I know it says he's 26, but he's really 53. True. And Case Stu is 22, but I know she's really 12. Yeah. 13, exactly. roughly. So this Her is actions not say going it to all. work. Yeah. So we just need to let them go, let them disappear. So Adam, stop being, talking about them. Being Adam. the local psychic for the show, yes. When are they going to break up again? Well, Breaking Dawn Part Two comes out on November sixteenth. Uh huh. So be prepared for November eighteenth. Ah, because yeah. So legally, they don't have to be together anymore. She's going to start banging someone else, and he's banging probably every <laughs> twenty-something <laughs> under the sun right now. Because I know John Stewart's going to be so disappointed. I know. <laughs> And he's just looking terrible every single day. Uh, I still maintain that he's a good-looking chap. Whatever. I know you don't disagree. <laughs> I know you disagree with me on that. I will always disagree with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, but so congratulations for... And thank you, Adam, for, for finally putting a bookend to this question mark? Question mark? Question mark. We'll, keep you, we'll keep you posted, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so my sound off this week... Uh, clear out your entertainment centers, fellow fellow, fellow video gamers, because we now know the release date and price of the Nintendo's upcoming console. Wii U? Whoa, you got it right. I was expecting a sarcastic remark there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Poor timing, bad <laughs> jokesmanship. <laughs> the Wii U will cost $300 wow. for the 8 gigabyte basic set in white and $350 for the 32 gigabyte deluxe set in black both come with the system one gamepad and an hdmi cable which uh, i don't know if you know this but it's actually kind of a big deal because it's actually the first modern system to come with an HD hdmi cable you've, you've had to buy one even for the hd consoles like the ps3 and the xbox 360 mm. which makes no fucking sense no just another trip to target exactly for another 20 dollar cable exactly so while the deluxe set includes a copy of Nintendo Land, which is kind of the Wii U's Wii Sports. It kind of just shows off the tech. It also comes with a disc, uh, access to the discount program and also stands for your Wii U and gamepad because you got to make it look pretty, right? So, so for $50 more, customers are getting a free game, which is going to showcase all of the, the console's new features and tech. Four times the storage space, which is going to be needed if you're planning to use the console long term. Long term, and a couple of stands because we're perfectionists and we're anal like that. I think so. Yeah. And oh, I and it com- and 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 the and it comes out November November eighteenth, just in time for Christmas. Yep, just in time for Black Friday. Ooh, Black Friday. Will you be uh, joining the masses on Black Friday this year? My wife will be. I have to work that Friday. Ah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Mike has one of those kind of jobs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, uh, well, so do I, but I'm just lucky enough to be off on Friday. You, so. Yeah, exactly. So um, I don't think I'll be picking this up at launch. I, my general rule for new consoles is if there's like ten, uh, five to ten games that I want that I must have, mm. then I'll go ahead and – because by that time, the console will be discounted or much cheaper, price dropped. So I will not be picking this up right away. It's a, it's definitely an interesting console. I know, I know I talked about it on the show before. I mean, you, you, you've seen it, right? It's like a, it, it, you, you play on the screen on your TV, and you also have the tablet feature. 
So technically, it's like a it's, it's like a high definition Nintendo DS if you mm. want to if you want to look at it that way. So it, sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Adam. <laughs> don't don't patronize me. I'm sorry. This is like <laughs> you talking about football and me hearing <laughs> these things. It's like right, I love yeah. foosball. You know? <laughs> Like you know, what game was great? Super Mario World. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a good game. I'll give I, it to and you there. Super Mario Three. <laughs> yeah, that was a great so, game, also. Yeah. So I, yeah, so those of you who don't know, it's 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 a new HD console from Nintendo. It has a tablet feature. It looks promising, but by the time the PS4 and the next Xbox comes out, technically this console will be downgraded graphically. So Nintendo has that problem where they don't want to push the envelope. They just kind of want to stay where the other guys are. And so by the time the other guys upgrade, they're going to be behind again. So, And that's, Take why, that into consideration. that's why I had to give up on video games because right. it'll never, ever end <laughs> until we're we're in the video game ourselves. But that's going to be all technology, though. I mean, you um, can't that's why say I that about... I mean, you can't say that about DVDs because now you have Blu-rays. I know, and it's annoying because yeah. I shifted everything from VHS to DVD. And after Blu-rays, against my will, right? <laughs> and after and after Blu-rays, it's going to be all digital because it's, we're just going to keep having all the storage space, and we don't have enough disk space to you know to accommodate for that. I so know. it's going to be all digital soon. And this is why I need to keep Mike around me because he keeps me up on all this stuff. Right. Because <laughs> I didn't even know what Wi-Fi was until 2009. <laughs> well, at least now you know. I know now. I don't know how the hell it works. The more you but know. I like it. The more you know, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, audience, for listening to us for the 13th time. Lucky Black Friday. Nice. 13th. You know, did, uh, I wasn't going anywhere with that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something, but I didn't. I, now I don't even know what I was going to say. But but thank you, audience, for, for, for sticking with us for all this time. And if you've listened to us since episode one, we'd love to know that. Please comment below. Even hit like or we, something. That's Shit. all we care. That's all we care. Thank you. Remember the egos. Thank mm-hmm. you, John, your former neighbor. Correct. I haven't seen since your wedding, but he was nice enough to like our... I haven't seen him uh, in a long time either. Wow. I miss that guy. At least, yeah, he, I guess he's listening. Or at least he clicked like. That's yeah. all we ask. You click like on always, my post. It's always him and me who yeah. click like on the <laughs> on the post, so yeah. that's cool. <laughs> so thanks for listening, John. I miss you, buddy. I still owe you that Heineken, don't forget. Uh, wow. And, so, so that, and thank, please join us again next week, audience. We'll be back. Same skinny time, same skinny channel. Look for new pictures coming to our That's right. Yeah. Site. The, the, ma- the makeover should be available now by the time you listen to this. Hopefully. As long as the pictures turn out good. Nice. I don't know how to end the show this week. <laughs> I think we just need to play it out with more Rise Against. Do, 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 do. Now we're just doing another podcast. Do, do, do. Enjoy your taco. <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> Don't enjoy your talk. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can't make fun of Chris Harder if you don't keep your talk. Please email me back because I sent you those nudes <laughs> and all I got was a cease and desist. <laughs> and don't forget about the picture of the, the outside of your uterus. You yes, need, oh, need yes, all those. Yes. Very yes. important. Yes, ladies, please email us so you can be discreet if you want. You should have practiced surgery and we haven't quite figured out what we're going to do with the pictures but we just need to collect them right now. No, because we need to look for donors because you need a new uterus. Oh, I that, need, yeah. I need one framed on my wall. Of course. Yeah. So compare and contrast. We and very much um, appreciate those. And if you want to come and show off your uterus while we're recording our podcast. That would be great too. Motivation. I, I like <laughs> See you audience. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>